We're going to work our way into the quadratic equation and the reason that we're looking at this stuff is that we want to be able to find the solutions or x-intercepts or zeros or roots, remember they have many names, of any single quadratic equation. Any parabola that you give me, I want to be able to find the roots of these. Including ones that have imaginary or complex roots or things that don't have whole number roots, non-integer solutions. And the way we can get all of these things is through the quadratic formula. We're not going to jump directly into the quadratic formula, we're going to kind of build our way up to it, starting with something called the discriminant. This is a small part of the quadratic formula. And I will write up here how we calculate that. D, or the discriminant, is going to be found by doing b squared minus 4ac. b squared minus 4ac. So that's what we're going to be calculating. So it says for each of these problems below we need to calculate the discriminant and then we need to state the number and type of solutions. We'll get into how to do that. First thing is identifying what is A, what is B, and what is C. If we look at this first problem here, the number out front of x squared is a negative sign. Well, I know that that really means negative 1. So in this one I have A equals negative 1. This number in front of x is what we call b, so b is equal to negative 4, and then this number uh, without any x term is going to be c, so c is negative 3. They all happen to be negative this time. When I'm calculating my discriminant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these values into this formula. So my discriminant is equal to b squared, and I'm going to always use parentheses when I'm squaring numbers, especially when they're negative. So b squared minus 4 times a, which was negative 1, and C, which was negative 3. And just so we got a little color coding here, we've got our B terms, we've got our A term, and we've got our uh, C term. So we can see all those there. So we got b squared minus 4ac, and let's calculate that. So discriminant is equal to positive 16 minus, what well, we have, negative 4 times negative 1 times negative 3. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 times a negative 3 is going to be a negative 12. So it's going to be minus 12, or plus a negative 12. And 16 minus 12, I know, is 4. So the discriminant is equal to 4. What we need to decide with the discriminant is going to be, is it positive, is it 0, or is it negative? Positive, 0, or negative. And when we get into the quadratic equation, we'll have a better sense of why those three distinctions matter. So for positive, we have two real solutions. So in this case, um, this d was equal to positive 4. We have two real solutions and you can see on the graph there's one real solution and there's two, uh, our second real solution, two places where we cross the x-axis. So when the discriminant is positive we get two real solutions. If the discriminant is 0, we would get one real solution. And if the discriminant was negative, we would get no real solutions, or we could say two imaginary solutions. Two imaginary crazy concept imaginary solutions. But two imaginary solutions. So positive we get reals, negative we get imaginary, zero we get just one real solution. And so for each of these problems here, you're going to plug in those values. Uh, we're going to look at this one here because this one poses an interesting challenge. Whenever you're missing terms, you can think of it as saying plus zero times x plus zero. So if we were to figure out what is a, a is negative one half b is 0, c is 0. So if we plug this into our discriminant equation, discriminant is equal to b squared or 0 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 1 half, 
times c, which is 0. So we end up with 0, and then this whole thing here goes to 0, because we multiply it by 0. So 0 plus 0, or 0 minus 0, discriminant equals 0. We said that when the discriminant is 0, that means we get one real solution. And if we look at our graph, there it is. There's our one place that we cross the x-axis. Our one real solution. It crossed the x-axis exactly once. Um, places to look out for, you'll notice in this one here, we never cross the x-axis. So we're not going to have any real solutions. We're going to have imaginaries in that one. And even though they're a little small, don't forget to do these two problems down here. You don't have a graph to help you, but you can still calculate the discriminant and determine what type of solutions and how many you have.